गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन एज पर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन रिपोर्ट बाय सेंट्रल पोल्यूशन कंट्रोल बोर्ड अर्बन इंडिया प्रोड्यूसेस अराउंड सेवेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड मिलियन लीटर्स पर डे ऑफ सूअर्ज विच इज इक्विवेलेंट टू थर्टी थाउजेंड ऑलिम्पिक साइज स्विमिंग पूल्स एंड विद द एग्जिस्टिंग इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर वी आर ओनली एबल टू ट्रीट अराउंड थर्टी वन थाउजेंड मिलियन लीटर्स ऑफ सूएज आउट ऑफ दैट and remaining 60% remains untreated this pollution or this polluted water not only comes from industries the very water we use every day it remains untreated along with the soaps detergents shampoos and all the chemicals that we use did you know that uh, one load of automatic washing machine takes up to 150 liters of water for a soothing shower of 10 minutes requires almost 100 liters of water as per niti ayog all this untreated water is discharged into our rivers and water bodies polluting them today the condition of our rivers and water bodies is deeply alarming these rivers were once the giver of life today they are struggling to survive as per 2022 2022 report by central pollution control board almost half of the 600 rivers which are monitored they remain polluted why can't we just you know increase the infrastructure and try to fill this gap over the years over the years we have worked on technology we have built engineering marvels It can be drainage infrastructure uh, pumping stations wastewater treatment plants however despite of all the investment and the effort that we have done our infrastructure is neither efficient nor sufficient these treatment plants they require high capital cost high maintenance cost they are energy intensive to operate almost 17% of the plants only can meet the water required standards and that is one of the biggest problems so how do we cater to that that is one of the question that we have to ask ourselves you know and if we were so in many of the cities uh, these treatment plants uh, are under capacity overburdened are sometimes non operational in small towns and villages these systems don't even exist at all they simply can't afford it if we were to build systems for this remaining 44000 million liters of water the estimated cost will be around 40000 crores and this is just the capital cost the recurring cost for maintenance and energy is additional let's take a step back and uh, imagine or understand what rivers are rivers are a complex ecological system where flood and flow defines the river flood is responsible for fertile silt deposition along the river banks and flow provides habitats for flora and fauna riparian vegetation which is along the banks of the rivers it provides uh, temperature regulation flood mitigation it is also a connection between surface water and ground water the biodiversity which is present it naturally acts as a nutrient balancer now imagine uh, the painting that we used to make as kids now lush green mountains a river teeming with life taking twists and turns uh plantation along the river maybe somewhere a fisherman fishing or catching some fish in the river isn't this how our river should be you know the rivers when they are not allowed to be in their natural form they start losing the capacity of performing their ecological functions unregulated urbanization has encroached our rivers with encroachment rivers are forced to flow in the regulated narrow concrete channels instead of their natural flow solid waste dumping sewage discharge industrial effluents they are all converting our rivers into sewers once they were givers of life and now they are carrying filth and poison you know the relationship we once had with our rivers of uh, respect reverence and reciprocity is replaced with neglect exploitation and abuse you know rivers have existed for millions of years 
early civilizations which existed and flourished along the banks of the rivers along the banks of the rivers they relied on dilution to manage their waste because the river ecosystems were robust enough to take care of the negligible amount of pollution but over the years the pollution load has increased multifold and the river ecosystems have become weak but unfortunately we still expect the same from the rivers now with constraints like limited infrastructure and high operating cost we realize that we have to find an alternate solution and we turn to nature as an ally when i was doing my masters i was introduced to a small plant called duckweed no more i read about it more intrigued i was with the power of nature this is a very small plant smaller than the size of a thumb it's an excellent phyto remediator that means a plant which can absorb nutrients from water so duckweed can remove around 90% of the contaminants from wastewater usually which is excessive of nitrogen and phosphorus it does not require any electricity it does not require any machinery you know having that interest in this property of duckweed prompted me to you know explore its application in wastewater treatment so we developed biological systems for wastewater treatment which were low cost low maintenance energy efficient and environment friendly we implemented these systems at various scales right from individual houses to institutions uh, communities we did face a challenge though the challenge was acceptance implementers decision makers they were still not convinced with the efficiency of these natural systems a lot of evidence building is still required to bring these systems into the mainstream you know for a river to thrive and perform its functions it has to be in its natural form when we consulted with multiple experts like historians hydrogeologists ecologists architects engineers and so on we realized that managing the health of the water body is a multidisciplinary issue and it requires a comprehensive holistic approach so what we did that we started with small but significant steps we looked at upstream of the river we looked at the sources of pollution there are multiple nalas uh, natural streams and urban streams which carry untreated water to the river but however having these treatment systems on these channels is not always possible because of the constraints like cost space logistics and this is where in situ decentralized nature based solutions they become a game changer so these nature based solutions they they also combine very well with the conventional systems that they have because they help in reducing nutrient load they help in um, decreasing the energy that is required they also help in sequestering carbon and they enhance the aesthetics the area looks green so basically we can nudge our river ecosystems through simple effective actions first bank stabilization if you have seen the rivers unstable banks or the edges of the rivers is an early sign of a degraded ecosystem it leads to soil erosion which causes sedimentation downstream and also disrupts the aquatic habitats so aquatic habitats are the natural areas which fosters the breeding of flora and fauna what we can do is use of coir lining stone pitching and strategic plantation of native vegetation of grasses and shrubs so they help in reducing the soil erosion by up to 50% so these linings they keep holding the soil till the roots of the plants grow and start holding the soil naturally second riparian forest so trees and vegetation along the banks of the rivers they are equally important they act as a connection between surface water and ground water the inter transfer of the water they help in flood mitigation they are excellent for temperature control they also intercept the surface inflow the water that travels from the surface and reduces around 54% of phosphorus 45% of nitrogen just within a 6 meter buffer 
Next is wetlands. So usually you must have heard this as kidneys of the landscape. So they can be established along the uh, river banks and they help in treating the wastewater, they help in uh, uh, recharge of the groundwater, they act as excellent habitats and most importantly, importantly, they are very crucial for flood mitigation. So now with stabilized banks, a good riparian zone and consistent flow, the biodiversity starts to thrive. Invertebrates, amphibians, birds, fish, they all start to repopulate the area which indicates a healthier ecosystem. We combined all these aspects, complex aspects that we had learned and then we derived a process called as WISER. Water body in situ ecological rejuvenation. It is a comprehensive holistic framework which integrates all these aspects that I talked about. And then we try to tailor made, tailor make these uh, context specific solutions for rejuvenation of water bodies. Engaging direct and indirect stakeholders is a cornerstone of our approach. You know, we, we strive to raise awareness about the complexities of the river ecosystems. We try to work with, with communities. We empower them through the, uh, you know, uh, the aspect of self-realization and which helps them. So the rivers, they should get their identities back and the respect that they deserve. Because we worship our rivers like goddesses. I think it's time that, you know, we start treating them like one. Through our efforts, we, we expect that or we hope that the rivers will flourish once again. They will start acting as life-sustaining ecosystems. Because when we give rivers their space, they will start working efficiently. Our rivers are not just channels of water. They are arteries and veins of, that sustain life and culture. It is our responsibility to respect them. It is our responsibility to care for them, recognize their functions and then the services that they offer. If we shift our approach from a human centric approach to an eco centric approach, we'll be able to manage the health of our water bodies and in turn the health of health and well being of human beings, which are intricately linked because when we give rivers their space, they will bless us with all the services that we depend upon. Thank you.